everyone. This is Amanda Grace coming to you Wednesday. Uh, we have a double header today. We have Dr. Mark Sherwood on first, and then at 4.45 p.m., we have Rabbi Jonathan Kahn coming on to talk about his newest book, Return of the Gods, and we will get into that later. So you get me twice today, basically. So welcome to everybody who's here. Welcome to our moderators and our Ark of Grace team. Thank you for helping me do what I do. Uh, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to show you a quick picture, and then we're bringing Dr. Mark Sherwood in from the Function Functional Medical Institute in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So let's just begin in a word of prayer. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, we come before you. Father God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your name. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. We humble ourselves before you this day, Father God, asking that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives. So you, Father God, your will and your power become more in our lives. Father God, we acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the earth in the form of a man, and that he came as the spotless lamb. He was the word became flesh. He dwelt among us. He went to Calvary. He willingly died on the cross. He willingly took our place. He purchased us. He redeemed us that day. He reconciled us back to you. Father God, we praise you. We, after he was buried, he rose again in three days, as was prophesied, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore, Lord. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise this day for that as we come before your throne. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we invite your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit in to fill this place, to fill this room, to lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, my power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Father, I ask you to dispatch in the name of Jesus Christ, your holy angels of all rankings and divisions, to surround this broadcast, to surround our homes, Father God, to just make a hedge, a shield, and a wall of protection. Father, just let your presence lead us in all wisdom, counsel, my power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Father God, take all the glory for yourself. You are the potter, we are merely the clay. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Without your breath of life in us, we don't have life, Lord. And we give you all the glory today in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, let me show you this quick picture for those of you that didn't see. But yesterday, we got new uh, residents at the sanctuary. The Lord had told me about eight months ago, another peacock was coming. He, except he didn't tell me there were two peahens coming with the peacock and there were three of them coming this time. So here we go. Here they are. Mr. Pete, Hannah and Hero have come to the sanctuary. So yes, it has been amazing um, to get them. This was very unexpected, but we got the call. It was a dire situation and we intervened and we went out to Connecticut to get them. So welcome, Mr. Pete, he, uh, Hannah, and Hero to Ark of Grace. I just wanted to show that. And now, without further ado, let's bring on Dr. Mark Sherwood. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Amanda. That's cool about the new peacocks. That's awesome. The Lord told me eight months ago about that mm -hmm. he was going to send another. That, he that was, so another cool. peacock was coming to the sanctuary, a male. He just didn't tell me the two females were coming with it. So right. it was a surprise. <laughs> he, gets, he gets the double bonus for that male. There you go. There you go. It's like a double portion. That's it. Come on. Mm -hmm. you so okay? how are you, my friend? You? Yes. Yeah, it's it's good. It's a, it's a wonderful day to be alive and a wonderful day to serve our Lord, right? Amen. This is the wonderful part about Dr. Sherwood. He is a spirit-filled believer, loves the Lord. He is biblically led in treating his patients. I am a patient of his. Chris is a patient of his. Chris was a tough nut to crack, but I think <laughs> Chris finally started. Dr. Sherwood's been very patient with him, I have to say. Chris is finally starting to get it. Um, so Chris has started making changes as well um, to his diet and lifestyle and so they have a in a way a biblical approach to health because you're treating yeah. the person you're treating the spirit you're treating the soul um and i'm going to let dr sherwood get into that we're also going to talk about one of his new products a little bit yeah. which we happen to have i brought it up just to show you and read to everyone what's actually in this amazing product but we'll let you start dr sherwood well you nailed it i mean certainly uh, the lord has uh, gifted us 
as healers. And, and it's taken me a long, long time, you know, in my own life to even say those words because, you know, it's, it's just, you fight through that, you know, you don't want to like come across as egotistical or arrogant. That's not it at all, you know, but I come across as confident because I know the power of my Lord. If I'll get out of the darn way, he'll do a good job. And uh, we've realized that if we treat the whole person, physical, emotional, spiritual, as Jesus did and as we can and as we should and as we do, people get well. And we've also realized, and I think people resonate with this, that the majority of people uh, that exhibit physical manifestations of disease are spiritually and or emotionally broken. And so there is yes. there is healing in this. And so we need to change all areas, be repentant in all areas, allow God to forgive yes. us in all areas, and allow him to heal us in all areas. And that, to me, is the epitome of what we as believers are supposed to be about. So for us, you know, healing is, is uh, normal. It, it should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. It should be normal. I, I think the enemy and the ways of this world have tried to deceive us into thinking dysfunction is normal. Yeah, I agree it's with you. It's normal to continue in that, and that's a lie. Yeah, the, the bar, and this is, I mean, I was caught just today. Just today, I was uh, had a patient here in my office, and I'll, I'll share the scripture with you. It's Philippians 3, 17 through 19, and it's a it's a wonderful passage where, where the apostle Paul is like um, is saying basically, hey, look, just pay attention to what we do and and copy it. Right. This is what we want you to do. And he's and then he goes on to say that many people are enemies of the cross. Right. And then he lays out the characteristics. One of them he lays out in Philippians 3, 19 is their God is their stomach or their God is their belly. Little G-O-O-D there. And it's. It's it's really and, and Paul is pleading with people in tears, right? And and I plead with people in tears because we don't get it. And it's unfortunate yes. that I see people that are wonderful, God fearing, Holy Spirit filled Christians mm -hmm. not accomplishing the fullness of God in their life and through their life because they are not allowing it, you know, and they're, they're stopping the blessing of God because of their own decisions. And God is not a genie in the bottle. That's not what he is. It's not who he is, man. He equips us fully to do everything we're supposed to do. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, hey, guys, listen, uh, man, I'm going to go. But when I go, I'm going to leave you with the comforter so that you will do better things and bigger things you saw me do. You'll do even more. Man, Greater work shall you do. Yeah, I'm crazy enough to believe that. Why not? Right? Why not? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus said it, and collectively, as the body, we are supposed to be doing the greater works. You know? Yes. And, and the Lord has gifted all of us with certain talents and equipped us with certain things we need to fulfill the call of God on our life. In Dr. Sherwood's case, it was for him to be a doctor that also ministers to people. Yeah. For the Lord. So, he, you know, the Lord called him to be a healer. And he's equipped him and his lovely wife, I love Dr. Michelle, yeah. to do such. Uh, and we have sent a lot of people to Dr. Sherwood, including in our family, mine and Chris's family, we have sent to him. Um, and they, they've just had these amazing transformations begin in their lives. Because if the soul, the soul prospers, the body prospers, right? If the soul is sick and not well, it's going to manifest in the body. It's all connected. And so you have to pay attention to both. And I think in the church many times, I mean, some of them even today don't even pay attention to the condition of the soul. Hmm. But a lot of them pay attention to the condition of the soul and they totally ignore the condition of the body. Yeah, and, and that's where the that's where the whole thing is. I mean, a long time ago, I, I haven't shared this too much, but I will today. Um, I had this uh, vision, right? I was I was writing on this notepad, it, and it was I thought it was a dream, but it was reality. I was writing a bunch of words on a notepad, and the next morning I woke up and 
And you know how you remember a dream, you're like, hey, that was real. I remember all that. It was cool. But then my heart started to pound like literally out of my chest because I looked over and there that notepad was. It had writing on it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what was that? And part of the word that the Lord shared was my people have lost their peace. They've lost their peace because they neglected the physical peace of health. And I called you to go into the world and communicate that message so that the people, my people, would be healed. And I didn't want that because I was like, oh, my goodness, that's going to get into people's business, their lives. And you get into the idea of what they eat. And I, I just kind of fought that for a long time. But finally, when I said, OK, Lord, I'm, I'm here. Cool. Do it right. Um, and we've been there ever since. And, and, you know, today in our world, the mainstream church, and this is not a knock on the church. This is just an observation. Mm -hmm. This is an area that grieves me deeply, Amanda, because we're still, yeah. let's just call it for what it is. We're using pizza, uh, ice cream, sodas to bait people, bait them, entice them to to come to youth group, yep. et cetera. And I got to say, you know, it's just a, a fair question. Uh, is that demonic or is that of God? Well, it's easy answer. And, and this is why I believe with all of my heart, the church as a whole ha is a body that has much infection in it, much cancers in it right now. And it needs mm -hmm. to have a repentant heart. I go back to one more scripture. Second Corinthians 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face mm -hmm. and, and repent of their sins, I will hear their prayer and I will forgive them and I will heal their land. Well, that land, that same word is, is not talking about just the ground around you for your gardening. No, man, we're made of dirt. It's talking about us. And we need to repent because, and, and you know, like on the road, when out and about, people make excuses. Well, I'm on the road. You know, it's hard. I'm like, no, that's not an excuse. It's not okay. We have to represent as if we're an ambassador from the kingdom because that's what we are and we have no excuse because we've lowered the bar mm -hmm. of excellence so bad which is really sad yeah. to now well at least i'm better than amanda or whatever I mean, that's just crazy and it's like we've lost our mind i think mm -hmm. uh it, it in some ways yes and we're bombarded with this unholy um trinity of sorts between the fda yeah the drug company and the food industry and this is an unholy trinity that goes on for all of them to benefit while keeping everybody else sick yeah it goes back to the i i i it's kind of like three prisons big government big food big medicine and mm -hmm. and they're all trying to dominate and control under the guise of trying to give you something that you need. And isn't that as how Satan is? He can't create, he distorts. He can't create, That's he right. confuses. He can't create, mm -hmm. he brings substitution. And it's always this alternate uh, reality. One leads you to the pathway of hell and one's pretty darn easy. The other one is a little more challenging, but it's so rewarding. And so we need to pick that narrow path a little bit more often. We, we do. And, you know, we have to understand that the enemy has a lot of devices and we are going to be bombarded. Um, and if we consistently make the right choices, they become habits and then they become a discipline and then it becomes easier over time to maintain that. And I think they purposely put things in food that cause the body to crave or get addicted or cause the, the gut to produce bad bacteria, which is where the cravings, a lot of them are coming from. And then, you know, lessen the good bacteria so that our whole body goes out of whack. You have learned so well, my friend. So <laughs> you really done a good job because the two things are happening. Let me answer the second part of that first. So people can really understand that this is true. The microbiome, or our gut bacteria 
is the predominant uh, producer or synthesizer of the neurotransmitter called serotonin. And obviously, if you got plenty of serotonin, you're not going to be depressed. Now, if you have not enough serotonin and you're depressed, that can lead you down something, a pathway to look for some comfort or some peace, a la interfood. Well, there's two things there that hurt us. With the processed sugary foods, they create a dopaminergic reaction or a dopamine response that's more powerful than cocaine. And this is a tricky one. With the the uh, the wheat kernel that's been genetically modified, the wheat seed, those mm-hmm. genetically modified seeds create what's called exorphins, E-X-O-R-P-H-I-N-S, which are kind of like morphine substances. And they actually bind to the opioid receptors, just like an opioid drug. And so that's why when we're depressed with no serotonin, we'll lend towards sugars, grains, or bread combined together, which is processed food, and it's highly addicting. And when you tell people that you just need to stop, their eyes will get big and they're like, oh, you know, and I've had drug addicts and I've had alcoholics tell me I haven't been addicted to either one of those praise the Lord but they've told me that it's harder to break a food addiction than it is a drug addiction alcohol addiction because you have to eat to survive you don't have to have drugs or alcohol that's very true you don't and so and with all the choices out there and the th- way things are kind of hidden and 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 snuck in there and, and other things, you really have to you really have to be a label reader to a degree and and see what's actually in your food and know what's in your food and start. You know, it's kind of like you got to do this gradually, but you start making smaller changes that then build on to bigger changes. And you will notice because one of the things we had discussed with Chris, Mm. the inflammation rate in the body, and this is, I'm going to have you explain this. This is going to tie right in. The inflammation rate contributes to so many disease uh, and, and sickness if it is high in the body. So maybe you can explain where that inflammation rate becomes so elevated that you end up getting all sorts of issues, including autoimmune. Well, it's interesting. Um, You know, let's think about our immune system. This is where it starts. Our immune system predominantly is around the gut again, because this closed tube from mouth to anus, because something comes in here, doesn't really mean it got in your body yet. I mean, technically speaking, it's Mm -hmm. going through the body, but not into the body. Well, the gut system or GI system has to filter that out and it has to say, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to let that go. This is waste products. So the immune system has to sift through that, too, to make sure it's not going to allow something that's going to hurt you. So what happens is we bring poor food in there. It causes our immune system to go in overdrive. And we have these little areas in our gut where they're called tight junctions kind of like a toll gate, like where the the traffic gets backed up and has to go to the toll gate and pay a fee and get examined, you know, whatever. Well, these junctions open up like that and they allow nutrients to pass through purposely. However, if we get this poor nutrition in there and too much, this poor food again, the standard American diet, those junctions get blown open, much like a toll gate getting blown up so that now the state troopers or state police, which is your immune system, has to act all the time. And they have to in turn yes. tell the National Guard that we've got a problem and tell the military we got a problem. And the signaling of the overinducement of the immune system equates with the inflammation signaling pathway. And the more that goes on, the higher inflammation goes, although inflammation is a good thing on its outset to tell everybody else around there's a warning sign going on. When it becomes chronic, upregulated, systemic around the body, it puts the body in a place where the inside of the structure, inside of organism suffers. Another example to paint that one home, our borders are open. And people didn't know. I'm being, using funny, facetious lists. So our borders are security just like the immune system. It should be. But when the borders get open chronically, we get systemically inflamed internally. 
Are we not mm -hmm. systemically inflamed in, in America? So the idea of chronic systemic inflammation is tied to every single solitary disease process that we know today as diseases, these things we look for diagnosis they're in. So inflammation is a massive thing and we have to understand some of these negative things we have in the environment, we don't have no control over, but many we do. Yeah. The part that we have control over, we need to really yeah. take control over and authority over and then allow God to guide us so the body can do what it's supposed to do and protect us as it should do. So what can people who are suffering um, from disease that comes from a high inflammation rate, what can they start changing immediately uh, to start to bring that level down? Because they're going to feel better when that level starts yes. to come down. They're going to they're going to wonder what happened because they're going to feel great. Well, they are. And um, typically, mm -hmm. let's understand the symptoms that they could face. If they're chronically systemically inflamed. They could have GI issues, gas, bloating. They could have joint pain. They could have brain fog. They could have fatigue. They could have de depression. They could have weight gain, et cetera, or mm -hmm. weight gain that they can't get off. Um, people can start with nutrition and they should, if people out there, if, if we're a believer, and I, I mean, this in its pure sense, um, understand that God did make food and food is medicine because we are not born with a medicine deficiency or a vaccine deficiency. No. We're just not, um, not knocking medicine, not knocking mm -hmm. good vaccines, I suppose, but you know, we're not born with those deficiencies. So we start with mm -hmm. food and people say, well, I'm addicted. I can't do this. I can't do that. that that's one excuse. Yes, you mm -hmm. can start at one meal. Uh, the second excuse I hear is this, and it's, it's been proven wrong. Eating healthy is too expensive. That is not true because of the simple fact, if you eat food that is anti-nutrients or non-nutritious, it has no vitamins and minerals, you're going to be more hungry. It may be cheaper to buy, but you're going to keep buying it because you're still going to be hungry. When you switch to even or even non-organic but healthy food, but preferably organic and healthy food, you're going to eat less over time because it's going to provide more nutritional value than things you need. Studies have confirmed, Amanda, that after we do this, you can actually save between five and fifty dollars per week by eating healthy over eating unhealthy. So it's not too expensive. Mm -hmm. So we just cut those two excuses completely off. And so what would you say is one of the number one foods that people need to change or cut out of their diet to immediately start to bring the inflammation rate down in their well, it's body? going to be in those two areas. It's going to be in the refined sugars. I mean, again, okay. that's not anything we need. Uh, then there's plenty of mm -hmm. substitutes for that. There's stevia, there's monk fruit, allulose. So there's mm -hmm. plenty of things mm -hmm. out there now, urethritol. So again, we can still get the sweet taste. The second thing is it's 1A with that would be the uh, the genetically modified breads and grains, and they're everywhere. Um, but again, mm -hmm. you, if you just do a little thinking about it, shopping and paying attention, you know, you can find cloud bread, which is kind of cool. You can find uh, cauliflower wraps, which are kind of cool. You could get online and find some of that. I know you do the einkorn flour because that's einkorn flour. Yep. That mono seed flour. And that's more natural. You can begin to find different ways. You could make these bread type products with almond flour or coconut flour as well. Um, so just know there's some things out there you can do, which is, is amazing. And mm -hmm. we have to make those changes. I, I don't, I hope people hear my heart with this. If you're a believer out there, it's not an option. You have to, mm -hmm. because if you don't, the consequences will kill you and they will shorten your life. They will increase what's called six span in your life and not necessarily increase lifespan. When you're in a, when you're a six span, when you're in that middle of that stuff, the devil's main temptations or distractions or us are, um, Fear, death, disease, and lack. One more time. Fear, death, disease, and lack. If he can get us focused on those things, we are completely off kilter of what we need to focus on, which is the goodness of God. So, again, we need to be super cautious with even what we broadcast, even 
even within media like this, you know, fear, sickness, disease, and death. I mean, come on, if, if that's a distraction. We are designed to shine the light and be the light, but you can't be the light if you're dull on the inside. Dull is equivalent to chronic systemically inflamed. Mm hmm. So with the uh, I, well, I can make a suggestion here, too. They do have gluten free, grain free bread out there. Yes, um, they sure do. I actually just purchased some um, regular and in, in uh, raisin bread form. And so you can do things like that to substitute. They do have gluten free, but then you have to watch the sugars and make sure they didn't put yes. extra sugar in. If the bread is gluten free, Dr. Sherwood taught us that. But as believers, for us to be equipped the way we need to be and in the shape we need to be, because let's let's compare it to the military, right? Look yeah. at the kind of shape the soldiers are in in the military. So look at the shape they're in. They don't send anyone into battle that is sickly, you know what I mean? And carrying, you know, so much weight they can't do what they're supposed to do. Um, and unwell, they choose people in the military that are and ensure that they are in the best fighting shape they can be. Otherwise, yeah. they pull them out. We're the same way. If we're soldiers in the army of the living God, if it, the enemy wants to wear our physical bodies down, so then our souls tire, our minds tire. We don't become as vigilant. Um, so we have to do the same thing. And this is a part like I said, that has been um, in a way cut out or isolated from the church for so long when it should have been intermixed right in to the church because we have to be in the fighting shape we need to be for the Lord to do what he's called us to do effectively. I totally agree. When you look at the temple as it's defined within mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you know, the Lord asked the same question twice. It's almost a redundant question, but why did he ask it twice? Maybe I figure it's um, probably important. Do you not know that your body is the temple of God? In one passage that you were bought with the price, therefore honor God with your body. In another passage, um, whoever destroys this temple, God will destroy him. Well, how many of us are destroying the temple every day? And, you know, this is clear. I was a former police officer and uh, I've heard this comment to sort of tag on to your illustration. Uh, police officers, you know, have gotten, you know, so hor horribly out of shape, horribly. And it's, it's I mean, obvious yeah. hear people make those comments. Oh, they couldn't chase anybody. They can't they can't defend anybody. OK, even believers understand that. Right now. Mm -hmm. What about the world as they look at believers? They can't defend anything. They look like everybody else look horrible, they act horrible, they are horrible, just like me. Now, again, what example are we setting? Good question by sure. Brenda on there. I'll That's go a ahead good question, read. isn't it, from Brenda Curry? Yep. What about Ezekiel yeah. bread? Yeah, Brenda, that is an amazing question. That bread has a wonderful name. Um, the name, <laughs> the, let's think about that. The name is deceiving. Um, you've got to be very careful with that. Because ultimately that will become addicting like other things. Uh, granted, it may be a little bit better than your normal Wonder Bread, Wheat Bread, but it's yes. still not going to be healthy despite the name. So honestly, you know, a lot of times marketing will fool us and it's very tricky. You have to sift through that. And just like Amanda said a moment ago, you have to read those labels and be very, very savvy at that. And then trust the sermon of the Lord. This is super important with you talk about appetite. Where does appetite come from? It's not something that just this whole body just does. No, it's given to us as a gift. When God blew life and created mankind, put him in the garden, part of the breath of God is the appetite that was breathed into that body to have the draw towards those foods in the garden to put back into the body what the body needed to survive. So there's a symbiotic relationship between the dirt, the ground, and the plants. We are designed to live like this, and God put everything here for us. And so listen to the voice of God within the appetite structure, and he cannot, will not, could not ever direct you to put anything into his temple 
that would destroy his temple. So does God ever direct someone to just eat a binge box of donuts? No, that didn't come from God. Does it? Did we hear that voice? Yes. No condemnation, no judgment. Just know that that did not, could not come from God because it goes against his word. Very true. And we're going to discuss right for a moment. You have, speaking of reading labels and what's on labels, you yeah. have a product. We have it, right? It's yep. called uh, Kingdom Fuel. Now, it is a, it's basically a meal replacement, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. I'm going to read to you what's in it, and I'll show you on his website where you can click on to get it in a moment. But I'm going to read to you some of the, because we're just saying you have to be good label readers. So this is a good example of this. That's right. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot in here. So vitamin D, calcium, iron, potassium, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, folate, vitamin B12, biotin, uh, uh, pan uh, pantothenic acid, phosphorus, iodine, magnesium, zinc, selenium, copper, manganese, chromium, and uh, molybdenum. molybdenum. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and there's more. That's just the vitamins in here. Yeah. You've got organic pea protein, coconut oil, non-GM uh, uh, sugar beet fiber, avocado oil, inulin, apple fiber, acacia gum, um, let me see what else. Natural cocoa, bamboo fiber, potassium citrate, calcium magnesium citrate. Uh, it, it just goes on. Chia seeds, L-glutamine. I mean, it just, there. look at the label. Hold on. Let yeah. me see if I can. That's how many ingredients are in this right here. Yeah. Right here. The fascinating so, fascinating thing about that is it's got, I mean, I, I hope people caught all those different types of fibers. First, that's significant because the majority of Americans get less than 20 grams of fiber every day. We need like 50 grams of fiber. What does fiber do? It slows down the transit of our bowels. It grabs things like negative things and it helps with modulation of cholesterol and modulation of weight. Isn't that kind of cool? That's just the fiber and the majority of the, um, meal replacement drinks out there don't have fiber there you go right there and it's really fascinating because it, and i look at this you know we did use organic pea protein people say why didn't you use whey because pea has uh less allergenic potential simple yes you want, we to, have, you want to make it for that yeah. Yes. So if you go to show.tv forward slash Amanda Grace, you're going to come to this page right here. Yeah. Um, it, the shop now for the Kingdom Fuel is right up there. You can click on it um, and I, you can order it. I believe they're getting more in. So uh, we just wanted to show you that. So you just go to that link, that website, and you'll see it right at the top. Uh, he has had me on uh, this type of meal yeah. replacement shape. Uh, for a while, Dr. Sherwood, where I take yeah. it, um, especially when I need it. Chris has started taking it. As you can Good. see, it's not full. Hold on, I'll show Dr. Sherwood. It's not full, see? Oh, there so you go. Chris Good. Good. It. His name is on it. <laughs> you know, um, tell people, when when, the, when you go order that, just know we've had, um, man, it's it solves a problem. There's a two-year shelf life. People need to know that, too. So when people are worried about what I'm going to eat. I mean, I get all that. God will provide. I look at this as God's provision, hence the name Kingdom Fuel. You're going to see on that link when you click on it mm -hmm. that it is on back order. And that is true. But just know it'll be about 14 or 15 days before it ships. And again, that's a good problem to have, you know, and so that's not very long. But go ahead and get that. Don't think twice about mm -hmm. it. I don't foresee that issue occurring anymore typically it's a four to five day ship period so it might be a couple of weeks so just people need to know that okay. and and you could actually mix this with unsweetened coconut milk oat milk almond milk you see i'm an oat milk type of girl i happen to, <laughs> i happen to love oat milk oh i just but just before i came on and you know you didn't ask mm -hmm. me i had a kingdom fuel shake and this is what i put in it i took and it sounds gross but it was amazing 
and I used chocolate, just FYI. I put three cups of spinach. I mean, hardcore organic spinach leaves. Boom, put them in there. And then okay. I put a cup and a half of mixed berries, you know, red, black, blue. Boom. And then I put um, I put three full scoops of Kingdom Fuel, which is a full serving. Might be too much for somebody. You know, I get that. And I put a little bit of extra omega-3 liquid in there. I did that. And then I mixed it with a little bit of unsweetened almond milk. Absolutely amazing. And and a complete I'm this is what I've been doing. Yeah, I've been doing this like uh, pretty much every day, at least once a day. And it, and it is not like a protein shake. It will fill you up. So just know that. Oh, it definitely will because of all the fiber too and protein in it. It's that's right. Definitely going to fill you up. Um, vitamin D3, L-lysine, L-threonine, L-glutathione. I mean, I could go on and on what's in here, but it really is. You will get more nutritional benefit in something like that many times because you know you're not going to eat it in weight in vegetables and fruit probably per day. And what this does is it helps you get everything your body would need. Yeah, and, and people should know I'm a stickler for ingredients. Um <laughs> we he is, I can tell you very that. <laughs> hard to source these things. I mean, we've been working at this since, believe it or not, November of last year. I started this process. Sourcing materials was not going to fall down the pathway of buying things from the Chinese Communist Party. So people should know that. But there's a lot mm -hmm. of there's a lot of things out there right now that uh, purport to have adequacy of amounts. Um just because something has a volume of stuff does not mean the amounts of that are adequate. The amounts in this are therapeutic from protein. There's over 20 grams of protein. I think this is the vanilla I have right now, and it's got a 20 grams of protein in vanilla. Um, you're going to have zero refined sugars in it, which is amazing. Um, so you're going to get this low carbohydrate, but you're going to get a complete fiber. We talked about that. You're also going to get a complete green and red. In other words, fruits and vegetables powders from both greens and reds and yep. complete, as you named off all those, complete multivitamin and complete multimineral. So really, we did this to really create a true meal. And this is what you have right there. This is a true meal. The only thing I might want to add to this is some omega-3s. I mean, honestly, um, and I think you do that. You should be in good shape. Um, you can live on that stuff. I know like uh, Clay and, <laughs> you know, Clay Chalice. Um, I forgot. Um, what's the guy's name? Carter. Clay Chalice. Carter, yes, Carter. They ate that. They did this whole thing for a month, those two. I didn't make them do that, by the way. Carter <laughs> lost over 20 pounds and felt amazing. Clay lost over 15 pounds and felt amazing. And I did not. I re people thought you made him do that. No, I didn't. That was their idea. And so you can live off this stuff. Is what I'm getting at. And you know what? How how long is the shelf life on it? So say people said, "Well, I want to stock up just in case there is an issue." Shelf life is two years. That's a good shelf life. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's a really this, good this shelf is me. life. If people are out there and they're like, I mean, I don't think like this, but I, I, I appreciate people that do. They think I need to get some, enough for three months food supply. You can. It's no problem. Um, my wife and I, we have about six jugs of it, three of each around our house. We do. Um, I can get it any time, but I have that in my own supply. So I encourage people to do that because, look, if it's there, you're going to use it. And if you use it, you're going to get yes. health. And mm -hmm. it serves the place of uh, going down to the, you know, fast food restaurant. You can get something here that's it's cheaper. Amanda, it's less than five dollars a serving. That's it. And it could be less than that if you don't use the full three servings. And like ladies like yourself, and I've told you this, you could use uh, maybe two scoops. You might get oh, enough yeah, of the fiber. Here's a good question. Yeah. From how ready now, how long does one container last? Yeah, this container obviously is biodegradable in its contents or recycled in its contents. So what you want to do with this, and this is what we do with them, is we try to use them as storage containers later on for other things. That's good. 
And yeah, I think they, they mean to the powder. How long does the powder last in there? So how, lasts, how many? Powder lasts two years. And how many serving? Okay, servings per container, 14, right? Is that That's about right. right? Two weeks for under three scoops per serving. Now, as I stated to you, um, a lot of people out there, and I, I'm well over, you know, I think I weigh 230 pounds, and I use the three scoops, but there's a lot of ladies that I've talked that says, I can't take it. It's too much fiber. It's it's too thick or too too much. And so I say cut down. So you really could get up to probably 20 servings per container. Okay. They're also, this is what they're asking too. Allie B wants to yeah, know Allie, how much it is. For I think it's about $75 on, on that uh, link. Okay. But again, you know, it's food, man. You got to compare it accordingly. Um, yeah. The average lunch in America today, Midwest lunch, is thirteen dollars and fifty cents, and that's just oh, so that can, yeah. So you're going to actually save money, and if you go down and get a a five bucks, you know, pun intended, coffee, right, and get something with it, you've already spent that much too. So you know, it's you got to look at it as a grocery investment, as a meal investment, and then it's mm -hmm. it's a no brainer. Well, yes, you're replacing some of what you eat with this, whether it's a breakfast. Yeah. or a lunch or something of that degree you're you're simply just swapping it out totally and you're getting better nutrition for less money so i mean it it's not a not a hard decision really no it no it's not and chris actually likes it i was surprised yeah, he, he chris said to me like that cool yep he does and he takes it um and what did i get him get him to take it with we're trying to get him to take it with oat milk he started taking it with um, with whole regular milk because I couldn't get yeah. him off of that. <laughs> so he started with that, but then he's moved and transitioned, and now he's more open to taking it with, you know, a milk alternative. Good. It's important because, like, yeah. even, the, even the dairy milk, the cow milk, as I was stating with the proteins in wheat have been genetically modified to create opioids, the proteins right. in cow milk, casein, have been genetically modified to create opioid effect. So let me ask you a question. Organic grass-fed milk that comes from cows, what do you think about that? Well, it's better than the old um, okay. pasteurized, you know, version, version we get. However, genetically speaking, there's a good portion of the population that doesn't maintain what's called the lactase enzyme, and they don't break down lactose sugar. Um Again, we've been inundated with this commercial that milk does a body good. I mean, that was a marketing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that. You've got they milk. Just, yep. They just did us in. But um, there are some populations I would consider it around the 20 percentile mark of America's population that actually can tolerate full, good, organic whole milk. Um, however, if you don't know your genetics, I'd be very cautious and not fall for the trap that it does a good because. It's not like you're going to get anything in that that you can't get in abundance in other sources as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because people have that questions about milk. You know, you're right. We've been inundated. Really, yep. the food pyramid, the first indication that the FDA is corrupt should be that their food chart is a pyramid. So that's the first okay. indication that maybe something's not right. And really their food pyramid, it, it really should be flipped upside down, the food pyramid. So they purposely have it the wrong way for good reason to benefit some of the biggest industries when really if you turn it on its head, that's the proper, more proper way I should say to eat. Well, I think you, you said a wonderful uh, word there. We need to turn it on its head. <laughs> Uh, you know, the whole thing needs to be turned on its head. You know, know that, and this is not to be funny, but it is quite common to think about. If the government says to do something regarding your health, do the opposite because they're going to profit from sick people and they're going to profit from sickness. And it's about profits over people. Good question about goat's milk. Actually, yep, we goat milk and even camel's milk, some cultures have that, is much more healthy than cow's milk because, this is important, because they're not as fat, right? Now, why is that significant? Because fat holds toxins, and the more fat the animal is, the more potential toxins they can have. 
Very interesting. I love goat's milk. I love goat cheese. Yeah. Now, what about cheese? Let's talk about cheese for a minute. Cheese is fermented. So even people that don't tolerate the lactose sugar and even are lactase deficient, or even you might say lactose intolerant, however word you want to use. Some people can even get away with a little bit of cheese as a condiment if it's good, whole fat, you know, pure organic cheese. Yes. You know, it, it, it's interesting. I don't know if you know the brand Carrie's, uh, Carrie Gold, but their cows, I think, strictly have to eat grass is yes. the way their brand works. Um, they very make some brand. very good cheese. I'm just going to say that. Yeah. yeah their cheese actually cheese, is pretty good. Cheese has a high amount of vitamin K2. Now, understand vitamin K2 is critical for a couple of things. It sort of helps push calcium into the bones. And it can help keep calcium out of the arteries. So it's a good thing to use occasionally as a condiment, even if, as long as it doesn't cause you GI disturbance, of course. Of course. Um, the G, the, I see more and more people having horrific GI issues. I mean, I'm just seeing it pop up everywhere. Um, yep. People who are going through this, I see so many things. My goodness, you have gastroparesis, you know, you oh. have which is slow motility of the gut. You have IBS. You have all of these things that have popped up um, over the years. What are some things if people are having horrific issues with their gut that they can uh, change immediately to try to help alleviate that? Well, you got to stop the offenders because all that stuff increased mm -hmm. along with autoimmunity once the food pyramid came aboard, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we saw obesity yes. increase. We saw GI dysfunction. We could see depression and suicidal ideologies and homicidal tendencies increase, all because of the poor gut bacteria. But all these mm -hmm. diseases that you mentioned, the gastroparesis, the IBS, whether it be constipation or diarrhea, uh, Crohn's, colitis, um, in, in, irritable bowel syndrome, you know, leaky gut, you know, um, mm -hmm. GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, right. the whole yes. head, reflux, all this, it's all going to be caused by those offenders we talked about. So you got to get those out, the processed food, sugars, mm -hmm. grains, bread, and probably dairy. Not to simply push kingdom fuel, but I would bring kingdom fuel in instead because that's going to help the stomach, help the stomach heal, bring in omega-3, connect with a functional medicine practitioner that can help you other things to bring about healing in the gut and reverse those disease processes. Do not get settled into and own that diagnosis. Don't do that because it changes your ID card. Instead of my name's Amanda, my name is IBS. We can't do that. We have to begin to think my name is Amanda. I might have been inflicted by IBS, but now I'm healed of IBS. I'm still Amanda. And I'll give my, I'll give, you know, a brief testimony right now. I started as a child. Oh, about the age of 13 with horrific stomach issues. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they took my gallbladder out by the age of 16 because it had stopped functioning altogether. Apparently it wasn't working. It wasn't functioning and doing what it was supposed to do. I developed gastroparesis. I got an E. coli at one point. Um, my gut was so jacked up at that mm. point. Now, stress is a contributor, too. So if you're in a very stressful environment, you're more likely for your gut to go sideways also. So stress and food, the wrong food, it, it, it is, is a perfect storm to cause your gut to just completely go off kilter. And I was hospitalized. I couldn't keep anything down. Mm. I throw mm. it up constantly. And I went through this until the age of 19 when I went to college and I got in a different environment and I started eating um, a little different and the gut issues started to subside. And now I don't need any medication for my gut. I take my greens, my probiotic, my prebiotic. I take what Dr. Sherwood tells me to take and I don't have to take any medication whatsoever for my gut. It has completely rectified, completely. Praise the Lord. And the body is a healing machine because God made it that way. 
God made it that way. We just have to give it what it needs and take out the things it doesn't need. Like Jesus turned over the tables. Amanda, you turned over the tables in the temple. You did a good job. And because you did that, it's amazing. Um, good question there. Um, gallbladder. Yeah, Lisa. Problem. Yeah, Lisa um, the gallbladder is, is trying to hold, um, you know, bile so that we can break down fat. It can become super inflamed with the toxicity of the body trying to clean out the garbage. Best advice for you is to do sort of a detox right now. And you might want to contact for us for that. If you want to do kingdom fuel and do that twice a day and use digestive enzymes that include lipase, L I P A S E doing that. Mm -hmm. can perhaps Give the, give the gallbladder a time to, to chill out. And hopefully save you some uh, surgery and some trauma. How else can people order? Is there a number people can call to if they want to order Kingdom Fuel besides the website? You bet. If they want to call our office, they can. Uh, they can call okay. us at 918-748-3640. Um, on that Sherwood.tv, you'll see a little tab that says clinic. Our contact number is there as well. Okay, I'm just putting it up for people yeah, to there see. You yep, go. that is the I just yep. say I, uh, I heard from I heard about Kingdom Fuel from Amanda. I want to order X. And what they're gonna do for you is they're gonna go into that link and they're gonna place that order for you. Oh, that's wonderful. And they're very nice at his office. I have to yeah. tell you, I talk to them quite a bit. I deal with his assistant, Jacob, quite yeah. a bit. Um, so they're very helpful, I have to tell you. And also, if you want to, um, on this link as well, and let me give it to you here. Let me see where it is. Sherwood.tv forward slash Amanda Grace. You can also, if you want to consult with them. Yes. And have them form a plan for you for the year. Uh, you can do that also through this link. Um, and I wouldn't tell you to do anything I wouldn't do. And me and Chris have both done it. Um, and uh, it has made a very large difference in my life. Praise God. Because yeah. I wasn't a bad eater to begin with. Even Dr. Sherwood said that. He goes, he just had to tweak a few things. Um, and, and for us women, sometimes our hormones have to be put back in place. That's a very real issue with women. Our hormones have to be realigned where they're supposed to be. Uh, they deal with all of that too. Dr. Sherwood and his wife, Dr. Michelle, uh, they deal with in that area as well. They do the most, I will tell you, the most intense blood work, the most detailed blood work you will ever have done. It goes to the Cleveland Heart Lab. I think the, the first round of blood work, it's like nine pages of information. It, it's just an enormous amount of information you get about your body, um, the, what your body uh, should be getting and shouldn't be getting all levels. It doesn't matter whether it's hormonal, whether it's from your thyroid, whether it's um, heart genetic markers. They can also tell you about that, the genetic markers, what you're predisposed to. Um, in, in my family, it was uh, heart disease, probably yep. because of all the prosciutto, the rivolone, and the ricotta salad, and the <laughs> pasta, and everything else they ate the, through the generations. So, you know, but it's, it does, though, you get to... You, you can see what you're predisposed to, so you never even have to deal with it, basically. You, you fix it before the issue happens. Isn't that nice that you get the ability to fix an issue before it even happens? Yeah, there's no reason we have to walk around sick, beat down, busted, and living in fear and lack and uh, all worried all the time. Stop it. You know, take the steps and find people that are going to love you, that are gifted in this area, and connect with them. That's what the body of Christ is for. Amen. That's what it's for. Dr. Sherwood, we are at 54 minutes. It has been uh, amazing to have you on. We like bringing Dr. Sherwood back on because he's a wealth of information. So we like continually to bring him back on uh, because he answers your questions too. You know, yeah. people have lots of questions out there and they don't know who to ask sometimes when it comes to health. So we love having him on because he's more than happy to answer the viewers questions and we will most certainly bring him back on. Thank you for joining me, doctor. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to see you. Give Chris my best and tell him I'm watching him. I will tell that's a joke. <laughs> he is watching him too. Yes, I will tell him, Dr. Sherwood. Thank you.
You're welcome. See you later. And this concludes our interview with Dr. Mark Sherwood. Stay tuned because at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, jo uh, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn will be on with us discussing his new book, Return of the Gods. I am over 100 pages into this book. It is an incredible book. So we are going to generate the link in a few minutes for it um, on, on uh, StreamYard. And so just stay tuned because we will be live at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He's giving us one hour, which we're very appreciative of. Um, and we can hear all about his new book. So God bless everybody and keep the faith. And also, I'm going to put this up at the end also. Let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. This is Beverly Hills Precious Metal. You can go to bh-pm.com. It's for all your gold and silver needs. Um, Andrew is very good, too, if somebody has an issue, us forwarding in the email and him immediately dealing with it. Um, but he's very knowledgeable in the markets, gold and silver. And right now, it looks like the markets are having contractions right now in the middle of what is going on. So you can contact him at his email. You can go online on his website and fill out the form for them um, and somebody will call you. So I just wanted to put that up as well. And thank you everyone for joining us. Always love having Dr. Sherwood on. Dr. Sherwood is such a wealth of information. He loves the Lord. He has a biblically based approach to health. And this is why we have him on because part of that is lacking in the body of Christ and it needs to be together right? The word, our soul food, right? Needs to be combined with the food God put on this planet that we're supposed to eat because our bodies are temples. And make sure you are putting the right almighty God, Adonai, in your soul and the right foods in your body. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. We'll be back on at 445 with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Have a wonderful day.